Originally, Talisay was called Minuluan because of the Minuluan River. Talisay started off as a small little municipality, maybe 200 years ago, and there's a cathedral for it run by the Recollects, and there's a city plaza area. Talisay was famous for the sugar mills, uh, first farmers, and uh, Talisay Silai Milling Company owned by the Araneta. So the area became a big sugar growing area. Then it became a city. The most significant thing in Talisay and for the whole island of Negros is what we call the Cinco de Noviembre, as it's well known for the day uh, that the Filipinos here in Negros rose up and fought against Spain. And it, that revolution was led by General Aniceto Laxan together with his cousin-in-law, Juan Araneta. From Bago. From Bago. This house is where they started the revolution. They walked from this house all the way to Bacolo. The house was built in the 1880s by our great-grandfather, Aniceto Laxon E. Ledesma. So the house is a, it's a plantation house. The main historical thing about this house, really, is right before the Cinco de Noviembre Revolution. Aniceto had a, a blood pack with uh, Bonifacio and when things went wrong in Manila, he hid here in the farm about 60 catipuneros. And they would have a lot of secret meetings in this house, together with a lot of other important people here in Negros. Uh, this was really the beginning of many things that happened in that Cinco de Noviembre revolution. As we all know, the revolution was very successful, and all those who were part of the revolution voted Aniceto Laxan as the president, because they declared Negros as an independent republic. It's actually called República Cantonal de Negros. So actually, it really separated from the Philippines. As a country. Yeah, and it became an independent country and he became the president of that republic. And this house became the seat of government. And that's why they would call it the Malacanang of Negros. The After Americans. that, the Americans came. And it broke his heart. And Iseto never wanted to surrender, but he realized that there was no way he could win against the Americans. The one who did the original design was really from Spain. Aniceto Laxon would travel a lot to Spain. And on the way, because at that time it was by boat, by ship, um, they would stop a lot in the Caribbean islands. And that's where he was inspired to do this design with the Spanish architect. This is the staircase, the grand staircase of the house. You, it starts from down there and all the way up here. And growing up, we really saw house girls every afternoon cleaning the, all the designs here. Very hard wood. Imagine in those times my grandmother had 13 helpers. And in the afternoon, 
they would be cleaning all the wood carving because not only the stairs has wood carving but the furniture also. Of course, the, the staircase is really known to be the grandest staircase. In fact, we grew up hearing the story that when President Manuel Casson used to come here, he would always stay here with our grandmother, Carmen Laxon, Claparols, and he would always say, Ay, maming, your staircase is even grander and more beautiful than my staircase in Malacanian. As you can see, this is a bedroom. Um, big hall doors with carvings up there, the 888s, all around the house, which is also part of the ventilation of the rooms. There is that 888, of course, which is very good luck in the Chinese uh, belief. And that's where there's a lot of ventilation that comes from the upper part. But uh, definitely there upstairs, there are no windows. They're all very big, tall doors. We have been told by the architects from Manila uh, for heritage houses that this house is the grandest house in the Philippines. And architecturally, they find it really beautiful because it has a lot of symmetry. The, the left and the right and all around the house, as you can see, all the windows, well, actually they're doors. The house has no windows. In the main house, they're just doors. So the house, all the doors are open and then the air circulates around the house. And then it leads here to where the life of the house was, the two verandas. This area was just full of tables, sofas. This is where everybody would spend the day. It's just a very cool area. And then another key feature, of course, is the wraparound veranda. For us, growing up in this house, it was a major part of our life because we would really play around the veranda, go biking, running, oh my goodness. It was a wonderful thing because you can see everything, the mountains and the sea and all the sugarcane fields. The main purpose of the wraparound really was for ventilation so that you had a little bit more space, but for my, our great-grandfather, the main purpose for him at that time was also that he could see his entire farm. According to the historian Saonoy, who has written about the history of Negros, said that uh, Aniceto Lacson was not an ambitious man politically. What he loved most was sugarcane farming. So he had so many farms. So mainly he was a very hardworking person and he loved and farming. Yeah, he was also humble. The second floor balconies together with the dining hall, which had a very long table, very long table. That used to be filled with the dignitaries and the politicians and the who's who of the island of Negros, of Panay, of Cebu, of Manila, they would all be here on Sundays and they would all be dressed up and they would have big luncheons and big debates. I remember my mother would be screaming because she was scared that we would break the huge jars that we had. And so, of course, I imagine so many kids. We, the, bal the Balsales, the Rosalios, and during the summer, the Claparols, and our Laxon cousins. We might have been 40 cousins running around. In 1970, the Typhoon Deeding um, hit this house. In fact, there were like tornadoes. The entire roof blew off. 
and we were all here. The Balsales and the Rosellos, we were in that house and never did we ever think that that typhoon would, the entire rooftop would explode. It opened up and it was raining inside the house. That so we had to evacuate the house and we never lived here. So nobody lived here for several years. And then our uncle, Eduardo Claparols, decided that we should uh, divide the furniture. So the furniture of this house is with the four families. Our safekeeping, mainly. This house is extremely important to preserve because it's one of its kind in the whole Philippines. That was a very uh, significant moment when the NHI, National Historical Institute, declared it. It should have been declared as a national landmark monument years ago because it is extremely important, not just for the history of Negros, but for the entire Philippines. A lot of people attended that ceremony. Family really is determined to restore this house and save it. So we created a foundation called General Aniceta Luxon Ancestral House Gala Foundation. And its main objective is really to restore it and to be able to bring it back to its old grandness, you know, to the way it was as much as possible. We also have plans, once it is done, to make the most of the house. My cry out to the government is, please, whatever is left behind, the part of our history, let's save it. But they have to do their part, the government, because the owners of the houses cannot do it on their own. It's almost impossible nowadays. This will cost a lot of money to fully restore it. What's happening to us is the same thing that happened in Europe. All the nobility, aristocracy, they cannot preserve their, their castles. So they, they have to find ways uh, through museums, uh, tourists, uh, visitors to see the house, to have events in the house so that they can preserve the house. You have to restore and preserve our heritage, you know, and, and, and also what you said. Let it be supported by tourism. My dream as a descendant of Aniceto Laxon and Rosario Raneta and someone who grew up in this house also, is that I want to preserve this house so that the future generations of this country can enjoy it. Sayang, sayang talaga. You know, this is something that now and the next generations have to be able to enjoy this house. This is not for us, the family, no more. This is for the entire country, for all the Filipino people.